Halloween, The Exorcist, Scream, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Blade Runner, The Matrix, Top Gun, Beetlejuice. Even Shark Boy and Lava Girl aren't immune to the dreaded legacy sequel. Some of them hit, some of them not so much, but Alien Romulus has cracked the code on how to do one perfectly. Welcome to the Romulus Space Station. First, let's just look at the definition of legacy sequel. This one comes from The Caller Times. A legacy sequel is a film that follows the continuity of the original movie, but takes place further along the timeline and focuses on new characters with the original ones still present in the plot. This is your Star Wars, Scream, Ghostbusters. The original characters are there, but they take more of a supporting role as they introduce new main characters. But obviously, there's no Sigourney Weaver in Alien Romulus, and it doesn't even take place further along in the timeline. It actually takes place in between the first two movies. So is it a legacy sequel? No matter what label you use, what defines these movies are the time that has passed since the original to the current one being made. And usually there are decades in between, but actually, if you crunch the numbers, we've had xenomorphs on our big screen every seven years or so since the year 1979 with the original aliens the franchise really hasn't gone anywhere but i get it alien vs predator aren't canon movies and romulus is going back to the ripley era of the alien franchise which we haven't seen since 1997. whether you call it a legacy sequel or not I think Alien Romulus is just the perfect example of studios to take note of on just how to continue a franchise, how to make a new installment of a franchise. So here are the four things they did right and the one thing they did wrong. The biggest win of this movie is they did not bring Sigourney Weaver back, and I am so happy for it. I mean, they already resurrected her once, and they saw how that turned out, so maybe they just took note and said, maybe we shouldn't do this again. Because when you bring an original actor back, there are going to be some pitfalls. Here are a few of them. One, the entire world can recognize it as a cash grab. If they announced that Sigourney Weaver was returning, we would all see through it. We would all know that Disney is desperate and doesn't trust the movie to do well on its own, so it has to rely on nostalgia bait. Another Disney-acquired Fox property that had a movie this summer, Deadpool and Wolverine, makes jokes about this while doing it at the same time. But what Alien Romulus does and what other franchises should do is just bring on an excellent director and creative team who are fans of the original franchise so they can add their new style and voice to it. And when you do that, the audience will recognize that this is a good movie and they will show up to see it in the theater. The second mistake made when bringing back a legacy character is just making them old, grumpy, and cynical and like hate their life. The reason why I think this trope occurs so much recently is, well, because half of those characters are played by Harrison Ford, but the other half is just because the writers didn't know what to do with them. The characters have already completed their character arc in their original movies, and so there's nowhere left to go except for bringing them backwards, for making them sad and mad and cynical and grumpy, and so by the end of the movie, they can just be less grumpy as they help out the younger protagonist who reminds them of their former self. No doubt in my mind, if they did bring back Sigourney Weaver to do an alien continuation, that she would be this older, cynical person who like comes out of a dark hallway and goes, so you wanna kill a xenomorph, eh? Well, trust me, <laughs> good luck to ya. The third problem with bringing back an original character is more so just on the business side than it is the artistic side, but it really does not leave room for the franchise to make further movies because you are going to pay this actor tens of millions of dollars to return, and guess what? If that movie does well and you want to make a sequel, you're going to have to pay them even more as they get older, as they're more likely to phone in their performances and just not want to be there. And sometimes when you can't afford that actor, then you lose them for the second installment because you can't pay them enough or just don't want to. Okay, I've given enough props to Alien Romulus for the thing it didn't do, but now let's praise it for the things it did do. Starting with the characters. All these characters are new, never before seen, 
Yes, I'll get to him later in the video. Just you wait, I'll talk about him. I think it was a great idea to make them blue collar workers who are stranded on this planet to indentured servitude, basically, to Wayland Utani, and their goal is just to escape. Yes, in the original Alien, the characters are blue collar workers who are working a cargo ship, but their motivation is that if they go to this distress call, they'll get more money. And plus, they know how to work a ship, they're a crew, they have a science officer with them. In Alien Romulus, <laughs> there is no science officer there. And again, the characters in Alien Romulus are motivated by wanting to escape this planet for a better life because they know if they stay on this planet, they will die there just like their parents. So not only are you giving us new characters, but the characters have new motivations from previous ones. Speaking of motivations, the Alien franchise has had a handful of characters who are driven by curiosity, by knowledge. They want to know more, more about the xenomorphs, more about what they do, where they came from, their anatomy. Not a single character in Romulus wants to know anything about that. Their goal is just to survive. But the characters in Alien Romulus make really smart decisions. There is no cliche horror movie moment where you're like, oh, they went into the basement. They're so stupid. That doesn't happen once. And the times where they do go back to save someone instead of going forward and saving themselves, it makes sense within the story and for the characters. While we're on that, let's start talking about Rain and Andy because I loved their relationship. I love Rain because she's not a Ripley clone. This is a Ripley clone. Ripley in the first movie did have some power and status, except for when it came to contamination breaches, but people on the ship listened to her, she was well respected, and the main characters in the first Alien movie were just co-workers with an established power order. Like, they all had their roles on the ship and they respected that. For the most part, but you know, things change when there's a killer alien running around. But the group in Alien Romulus is just a friend group which actually makes it more hectic and scary when they have to make decisions because there is no one leader. By making them these unexperienced kids, Rain just doesn't have the experience that Ripley does. Not to call Ripley some Mary Sue, in fact she's like the poster child of the anti-Mary Sue and how to write good female characters, which is something for a whole other video entirely. But that being said, Rain isn't a Mary Sue either. In fact, I love the part of the movie where they acknowledge that like Rain has never shot a gun before and so they give her auto aim. That's awesome. Rain isn't some stone cold badass that says one liners. No, her superpower is that she cares genuinely for her friends and will do anything for them. Well, you know, except for that guy, but he had his reasons, which I liked. Basically, his mom died in the trolley problem where a synthetic had to make the decision of what to do. And we see that exact same trolley problem happen out later in the movie where Andy has to decide what to do, whether or not he should open a door. Ripley has always had friends and allies throughout the different movies, but none of them like the relationship that Rain has with Andy. So bringing that new aspect, I really enjoyed. So to recap for all you studios listening out there, make new characters that aren't a rehash of the old ones. Make them different genders and ages and from different backgrounds, different socioeconomic statuses. Play around and show us characters that we've never seen before and give them new motivations than the other characters had in the original movie. Just like the characters, the story can't be a rehash of the original. It can't just be people on a spaceship encounter a xenomorph. Instead, it's people go up to the spaceship to steal this one thing that will give them a better life, but along the way, they encounter a xenomorph who is already there. And yes, I know Romulus has a very similar story structure to the original Alien, but it's the same as like the Scream franchise. All the Scream movies follow the same formula, but they switch it up every once in a while, like changing the number of how many ghost faces there are. Or like Evil Dead Rise. It's the same story as Evil Dead, but it's just in an apartment building, and instead of a friend group, it's a family. It's enough changes to make it fresh, but it still follows the exact same story. Or like Halloween 2018. It's the same story as the original Halloween, it's just that 
Jamie Lee Curtis is older now. Repeating the original story is playing it a bit safe, but I understand because studios are scared to do something new, because when you do something new, fans might hate it. I appreciate all that Halloween Ends brought to the table in terms of new stuff, but it was just too little too late because it was the final movie of the trilogy. If they established at the beginning of the trilogy that Michael Myers was living in a sewer and corrupting teens, making them kill, and they expanded on that idea throughout three full movies, then that might have been a really good idea that paid off really well, but instead they just shoved it there right at the very end. I get it, some beats of Alien Romulus do play it a little bit too close to the original Alien, especially when it comes to the antagonist, yes, I'll still talk about him, just you wait, but what impressed me the most and had my jaw on the floor is what they did in the finale, the climax sequence, the classic Alien fourth act. Both in Romulus and the original, our final girl thinks she's safe as she blasts off in a smaller spaceship as she gets ready for cryo sleep. But uh oh, there's one more monster that has found its way on board. Except in Alien Romulus, she's not fighting any old xenomorph, she's fighting something completely new, a xenomorph human hybrid. I understand why this might turn some people off because, you know, people don't like change, but I can very much see a version of this movie where it turns out the xenomorph that Ripley fought at the end of the original is still alive and is in some containment unit and then breaks out and finds its way onto Rain's ship at the end and now Rain has to fight the exact same xenomorph that Ripley fought and it's like, oh, isn't it cool because of this connection? But instead, it would just be kind of cheap rehashing of the original and instead, they just straight out kill the xenomorph that Ripley fought. They show a shot of it. It's it's straight up dead. They don't do that and instead just give this movie an identity of its own by showing us something we've never seen before. But we have seen different Xenomorph variants in other movies, so this isn't some big jump the shark moment for the franchise, but instead is a way to deliver us a completely new and terrifying creature. All alien movies have an anti-capitalist message, but Romulus might just be the most anti-capitalist, because the monster Rain fights at the very end is what Wayland yutani sees as the perfect worker. I mean, this thing isn't getting sick in the mines anytime soon. And so not only is it something new and a very scary creature for just shock value, but it also is thematically relevant to the story the movie is trying to tell. This section is going to be less about storytelling and more about how to make money for the studios, so just stick with me. It's no shocker that introducing new characters played by young actors actually gives the franchise somewhere to go in the future, like sequel-wise. And like I said earlier, continuing to bring back an original actor can be pretty expensive. Deadpool and Wolverine makes the joke, oh, we're gonna have Hugh Jackman till he's 90. And let's talk about Deadpool and Wolverine for just a second because it is another Disney-acquired Fox property that had a movie come out this year. I overall liked it. I'm a huge fan of the original X-Men franchise, and so I was a fan and I was serviced during all the fan service moments. But the thing that bothered me most about it is that it's so fence city, like it doesn't make any definitive decision. Like in all the marketing, it says Deadpool is going to join the MCU now. And at the end of the movie, he doesn't. We, we don't know what's going to happen next, but in a bad way. Is Hugh Jackman going to return as Wolverine again? Or are they just going to cast someone new? Are Blade and Elektra dead, or are they just gonna come back in Secret Wars? The best way I can describe this is that Alien Romulus is a full, well-rounded meal. And you eat the whole thing, clean the plate, and you are stuffed. And you go, man, thanks Fox, I would like another one of those in the next five years. And Deadpool and Wolverine is like eating three french fries that taste good in the moment, but you're still hungry, and you go, hey Marvel, can I get some more? And they go, not until 2028. Both movies leave you wanting more, but just in different ways. I appreciate Alien Romulus for just being a full, complete story, but at the same time, it does have sequel potential. I'd love to see Rain and Andy's adventures in the future. Okay, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. 
the one thing that didn't work. It's quite obvious. Pretty much everyone does not like this decision. They used CGI to put the face of deceased actor Ian Holm on the face of the character Rook. An alien Romulus and Ian Holm played Ash, the synthetic in the original Alien. Apparently, his family and wife was all supportive of this and loved the idea, which is great for them and it helps just soften the wound just a little bit. But at the same time, it's like, just hire a new actor. Because I get it, it's supposed to be the same model that Ash is in the original Alien, and so it would make sense for them to have the same face, but you can just recast. I'm in full support of recasting, especially when an actor passes away, because I'm sure that deceased actor would like nothing more than to give a new upcoming actor the opportunity to play the same character they did and give that person more opportunities and grow their career in the future. So if you wanted it to be the same model as Ash, you could just cast someone who looks like Ian Holm, or at the same time, it did not have to be the same model as Ash in the first place. It could just be someone completely different. And they did that with the entire rest of the cast. All these people are basically no names except for Kaylee Spaney and somewhat Isabella Merced. I mean, if you know her from Dora, that's great. The other thing about the movie that fits into this category is that characters do quote existing lines from previous movies in Alien Romulus. Um, there's specifically one line where you just know that they wanted the audience to clap and cheer once the character said that. For some people, I get it, it can be eye roll inducing, and for other people, they will clap and cheer when they hear that line. For me personally, I'm okay if they quote Ripley as long as they promise to never bring her character back. And if they do, they better not make her a disgruntled, grumpy nihilist. So those are my thoughts on Alien Romulus. What are yours? Tell me in the comments and also say what notes would you give to a studio who's thinking on making a legacy sequel? Let me know and if you love horror movies, subscribe because I got some great stuff coming out soon.